beautiful and useful objects made of metal is always the creative thought of the designer. To this, and his skilled hands, we are indebted for every detail that gives to the finished product the quality that we call artistry. Here, our craftsman has placed a flat, circular blank of pewter in a spinning lathe. With a wooden back stick, he centers the blank. And now he starts to bend the pewter to the contours of a bowl, represented by the bronze form or chuck at the left. The process is called spinning. At this point, he trues up the edge with a cutting tool. The lip of the bowl is bent back to form a reinforced top. The blunt spinning tool does the job handily. He gives the rim a final trimming with a cutting tool. Thus, the bowl is quickly brought to its final shape but it must rest on a substantial base. One way of making such a base is to cast it in a bronze mold. This mold is made in two pieces which fit together, leaving an entrance for the molten pewter. Each half of the mold is first given a careful coating of smoke to ensure that the hot metal will flow smoothly about the mold and that bubbles will not form as it solidifies. The craftsman protects his hands during the pouring process. Within a few seconds, the pewter hardens and the mold can be knocked apart. The base is still quite hot. The excess arm of pewter will be trimmed off, leaving the circular molded base to be carefully centered and soldered onto the inverted bowl. How skillfully the craftsman guides the molten solder evenly about between bowl and base. After a few finishing touches, our bowl of pewter is ready for use. A richly pleasing product of the craftsman's art. The first process in making a hammered bronze bowl is called raising. The craftsman shapes the metal with a succession of accurately placed blows from the raising hammer. Now the raising hammer actually compresses the metal nearer the rim. Thus the bronze blank has been given an even, hollow shaping by skilled blows of a hammer. Because of this constant hammering, however, the bronze has become quite hard, so the craftsman puts it through a heating process called annealing to soften it before further working. In his forge, with the aid of a blowtorch, he gives the partially shaped bowl a thorough, even heating, which brings it up to the point of redness. Then, after cooling it, he again attacks it with the raising hammer. This second raising brings it much closer to its final shape. Now we see our bronze bowl as the craftsman completes the final stage of raising. After annealing or softening by heat, the marks of the raising hammer will be erased by a tool called a planishing hammer. After the edge of the bowl has been cut away evenly, it needs only buffing and polishing. As the bronze takes on its brilliant luster, we appreciate more fully the texture given to it by the planishing hammer. But we appreciate the craftsman's work fully only when we see our bronze bowl 
richly finished in its final useful setting. The metal craftsman must also be a skilled foundry man. We see him here preparing to cast a pewter candlestick using wooden mold forms and special sand within iron frames. The top half of the mold has been put into place and covered with sand. And after the sand has been tamped firmly down within the mold, the top half of the form is removed. We see that a faithful impression is left with the exception of slight imperfections here and there. The half of the mold is again temporarily put into place and these imperfections are repaired. By moistening the edges, the craftsman is able to lift out both halves of the wooden candlestick form without damage to the sand. Now, an entrance for molten pewter in this half of the mold opposite a hole called a gate in the other half. Both halves of the wooden form are removed and in the upper half of the mold, preparations are made for pouring. The hollow space within now corresponds to the outside dimensions of the candlestick. This core corresponds to the inside dimensions of the candlestick. It is made of sand baked with oil or molasses. The space to be filled with molten pewter can be seen about the edges. Extensions hold the core proper in place. The form is now carefully put together with the entrance gate for the metal uppermost, then is firmly locked with pins at either end. It's ready for the pouring. The liquid pewter rushes quickly through the entrance gate and into the open portions of the mold about the core. Soon the center of the metal remaining in the gate begins to sink, indicating a successful pouring. The rough molded candlestick is removed within a few seconds while still hot. The outside is rough, bearing the imprint of sand. This and other imperfections are removed on the lathe leaving a brilliant finish. The cutting tool is plied over each part of the candlestick with extreme care. Later, a base is soldered on and the candlestick and an identical companion take their places in a useful setting. The metal craftsman exhibits further artistry in making this preliminary sketch for a jewel box. The carefully worked out ornamentation is transferred with carbon paper to the flat surface of the metal, in this case pewter, before it's shaped. The design is worked into the metal by a process called chasing. Skilled hands, aided by a hammer, tapping and guiding a chisel accurately over each line. When the chasing has been completed, the flat sheet of pewter is ready to be shaped. The inside of each edge of the bottom has been deeply scored to permit accurate bending. When this is completed, the sides have been brought up with their edges together and the box is ready for soldering. A small piece of solder wire and a tiny blowpipe are all the tools needed here. The deeply scored edges around the bottom likewise receive a smoothing and reinforcing application of solder. Now to finish the lid. After shaping, the lid receives further decoration by a panelling, which is soldered on, and also a handle. After supports have been added to the base, the craftsman surveys his finished work with satisfaction. An equal sense of pleasure cannot fail to come to the final owner of this gem of metalcraft as she examines with evident appreciation its lustrous texture and its graceful design.